God love the trade bell. <laughs> Sam Edmund, welcome. <laughs> a moment of pause. Good yes. to be with you. Uh, I know it's. I want to put you in the right mood for it. I feel like you're a bit. Well, I'm a bit. Up. I'm a bit agitated that's today. Okay. But that's it's... okay. The bell. The bell strength. So, me. Magpie of Coburg North has sent this through. Mm. Something very odd happened as I was leaving a nail salon on Bridge Road yesterday afternoon. I took out my phone to take a photo of my beautiful new nails and noticed that my Hey Google thingy had been on the whole time. I was in the salon and listening to the nail artist's conversation they were having in Korean. Naturally, I hit translate button and was very surprised to read the Google translation. They were saying over and over again, Tom Green to Richmond, Tom Green to Richmond, Tom Green to Richmond. <laughs> well, we might as well throw him in because half the GWS Giants list is going to Richmond, Jared, it would appear. What? What an extraordinary recruiting flex. That's what the kids use these days. Flex that was from the Tigers yesterday. That meeting with the contractor giant, Jacob Hopper. That, Damien Hardwick confirmed with you on AFL 360 last night, took place. Now, we've already got Tim Taranto on the hook down there on a very good deal, we might add, and a long-term one. Jacob Hopper as well? So we, we're not privy to the books. We don't know what the bottom line looks like. Clearly, they can do it financially. But how do they do it in the trade sense? Because we've got those figures in front of us. They've got their first round pick, obviously, pick 12 as it stands at the moment. They've got two second rounders, their own, but one tied to North Melbourne, which is handy, which that sits at 19 at the moment. So 12, 19, I think there's a 30, and then you go all the way back. So how do they do it from a trade point of view? Taranto's not contracted, but Jacob Hopper clearly is. He's also been courted by Geelong and clearly just wants to come home. He's just got to settle on his destination. So what sort of trade for those two prime midfielders would possibly satisfy the Giants. And that's got the whole industry at the moment scratching their head saying, how could they possibly do this? Do, does, does, is there a view that they could land both? I think the competition, the people that I've spoken to at other clubs, and this is list managers, it's player managers this morning as well, are genuinely bewildered as to how it would possibly happen. Does another club have to get involved? Are there future picks involved? GWS, we know, need to ease the squeeze but they're not going to be railroaded into giving up quality players for nothing. Surely players of that that calibre. And does Geelong still have a role to play in Hopper, given we know how far down the, the Hopper path the Cats have gone? They wanted their own double act. They want Hopper and Grundy to come in. So uh, it's, a, it's a good choice to have, though, for Jacob Hopper, isn't it? Am I going to Richmond or am I going to Geelong? Both want me. I want to come home. Great, great to have options, Jared, as they say. We're in the trade bell with Sam Edmund for Effective Freight Solutions. Get started with us today. Who are we waiting on? Yeah, the waiting game is interesting, and there's no more torturous waiting game than that owned by Western, lived by Western Bulldogs supporters at the moment because Josh Dunkley still hasn't told the dogs of his intentions for next year. Unsigned, being wooed heavily by Port Adelaide. I think that is the club. I know Brisbane have bought a ticket to the raffle here, but the Port Adelaide offer is the big one. This is the one that trumps the dog's offer, trumps the Brisbane offer. This is um, exhibit A for temptation for Josh Dunkley. And I know he's got a, a link there. I know his partner plays netball there, but um, that is the link. The contract offer um, in its length and in its, I guess, financial clout, that's the one. So there's a lot of intrigue at the Dogs, which we'll get to in a moment. But the other waiting game, Darcy Gardner, still unsigned at Brisbane. Now, he's taken his time historically with this sort of stuff before, but still Brisbane are none the wiser about what he wants to do. And they have had a contract in front of the, their defender, best 22 defender at that football club for some time, and he still hasn't signed it. So that's a waiting game. Trent Cochin and Jack Rewalt. Listening to Damien Harwick last night, the waiting game will end on both of these two today. Um, both have wanted to play on, so assuming contract-wise, everyone is happy there. I think that celebrated pair go on into 2023. Um, and then there's the likes of Crozier looking around at the Western Bulldogs, Josh Shackey. There's so many players without contracts at the moment, they have to wait. The Brown brothers at Collingwood as well don't have an offer, don't have a home. Jason Johannesson, not a certainty yet to Gold Coast, but it's a solid offer. And they have a need there that would see the Norm Smith medalist reprise his dashing halfback role, which he hasn't been able to do. When Bailey Dale came on the scene, the little master Caleb Daniel pulling the strings there, he hasn't been able to do that at the Witten Oval. So the sell for him is, yes, it's a three-year contract and a solid one, but you get to play halfback again at our football club. Junior Rioli? Yeah, this is the one. He seems destined for Port Adelaide. I mean, nothing official locked in yet in his camp. It pains to, to stress that no decision has been made, nothing locked down. But the play himself says he wants to play for the power. I mean, he's met with them. He's had a medical with them, Jared. He's had a contract offer from West Coast. Financially, that offer is light. But this is a decision that we said some time ago in this slot that goes well beyond the boundary line. I think Willie 
wants to move clubs as much for family reasons as he does for football reasons. His immediate family have never been based in Perth. They've always been up north. So that's his kids. That's his partner. So I think Adelaide might very well be different in that regard. Melbourne would have been as well. So there's been some family and personal logistics for him to work through, but all signs point to the power at the moment. Do you want to take some material or do you want to add a little bit more? Just one quick one on North Melbourne. Um, we'll work through the kangaroos. So Tanner Bruin, you know, uh, want to buy Hawthorne. Kangaroos are really keen. Geelong and two. They're also in the race for Griffin Logue. Jason or Francis locked in for next year. Todd Goldstein soon to be that. The specifics of that one just being worked out. Now everything pointing to him staying. There's just one other player I want to mention. That's Taron Thomas. Perhaps... Just one to keep an eye on. Now, I know we reported recently that he was gettable a couple of months ago and Gold Coast were interested and they'd gone a fair way down the track. There'd been discussions about him being traded up there. As we said, though, I'd close the door on the Suns, but there's just some murmurings that there could still be a twist here. He's contracted for two more years. I'm just not sure how happy he is there and whether he might act upon those feelings in this trade period. He might not, but he might. So just a watch on Taron Thomas at the Kangaroos. Okay. So we've got a whole lot of stuff. You're going to do Liam Stocker after midday because that's not quite trade bell material at the moment. So you you keep working on that. Righto. And that that's rich midday madness material, I, I think, think, because Carlton people are wound up about it. Yeah, and uh, and the fallout from this has been extreme. But I've made some phone calls, and okay. I think I can set the record straight on that. So we got two detailed emails, separate accounts, separate eyewitness accounts to the same meeting. Mm. I, and I'm a... I'm going to be a little bit vague because the detail was very specific and it came with, please don't use my name and all of those sorts of things, right? But they had Darcy Parish linked to Hawthorne. Have you been able to, do you want to categorise that? Do you want to tease it out? I can't say I haven't heard it because we've heard it. We've we've discussed, there's been a lot of, and they're just text messages and emails, but there has been a lot with Darcy Parish's name attached to it. I haven't been able to put any meat on the Darcy Parish bone. I would love to. I've been trying. But the where there's smoke, Jared, there is sometimes a little bit of fire. So we better not say too much other than it's noted here and it's up on the it's up on the whiteboard. Yep. So thank you for your correspondence, both of you. Very detailed. That was an excellent level. Uh, and we're working on it. All right. Here's today's names. Quinton Narkle to Essendon. We'll check it out. We'll check it out. Now, we know Essendon are hunting in that space. They, they missed out on Bobby Hill. They missed out on Isaac Rankin. They would like a small forward. Anthony McDonald Tipper Woody has departed. I'll write down Quinton Narkle, Essendon. Can't answer that categorically. Jade Gresham and Xavier Dersma to Hawthorne. That's from Ben. I couldn't see Jay Gresham going anywhere. Surely Jay Gresham's not going anywhere. Um, now, Xavier Dersma, we've spoken about a bit. Because Xavier Dersma didn't have a great season. Um, and there was a few things involved in that that really boiled down to him being unhappy for a fair period of time. Now, it was put to me very clearly that, that unhappiness didn't extend to him wanting to leave Port Adelaide. It was just unhappiness at his situation. The fact he wasn't getting played or he was a sub or he was getting played out of position or he'd been injured. It hadn't gone as far as to, Kenny, I want out. Yep. So that's probably the best way I can explain that yep. one. So that's Ben. Alistair has got a different destination. He's got, I'm hearing James Harms and Xavier Dersma to Carlton. Yeah. So Dersma, we've answered. Harms, I often look at Harms and I think, as a player, do you sit there and think, oh, I'm in a great side, but I'm playing a bit like the Brayshaw syndrome. I'm playing out of position. I'm playing in roles that I never thought I'd really be playing AFL football. And could I be better as a midfielder? running free, winning the ball, doing what I think I do best? The answer to that's probably yes. But are you willing to uproot yourself from one of the best teams in the comp to go and fulfill that individual need? Or do you bury that in the back of your mind in the quest for team success? It's a good point. And I think it's, whenever I look at James Harms, I'll, I'll find myself wondering that. Teddy, I've heard Wanganeen Miller wants to go back to South Australia. Okay. I'm writing. I haven't heard that. Writing it down. Peter's email sort of escalated as it went through. It started with, I've heard a whisper that the Pies are asking for a first and second rounder plus Jacob Van Ruin for the Grundy trade. And then it finishes with, take it to the bank. Yeah, Peter, that escalated quickly <laughs> from a whisper to a certainty. I tell you, you've only got to ask a couple of Melbourne supporters to get their thoughts on Van Ruin. They say he should be playing this week. Yes. Get him in now. Don't worry about Tom McDonald. Get him in. If Jake Melksham doesn't come up or he loses his spot, 
This is the guy you've got to get in. They're excited about him, Jared. Jack has been haranguing me on the email, so I've <laughs> sorry to keep bombarding you, but I've heard that Dunkley has made his decision. He wants out. This was mm. followed up with him being keen on Essendon. Please discuss. I'll follow up with a trade for you as well. Tom Mitchell to Essendon for Braden Ham. Now, Tom Mitchell to Essendon will not be happening. I've had that put to me very bluntly this morning. What I've also had put to me very bluntly this morning is that no decision has been made from Josh Dunkley yet. If he's made it, he's made it within his own mind. He hasn't portrayed that to anyone yep. who would uh, who would pull the trigger on that. So we're none the wiser. And Dennis said, uh, emailed, 100% take this to the bank. I work with a player's father from the Hawks. They have told multiple key Hawks players they are going to try and trade them. Mitchell's seventy percent done to the Saints. He's been meeting with them at a cafe oh, in Richmond. Don't bring cafe up the sightings. Sore topic. They're better than real estate guys. This is a sore point because I know we'd had this email a few times <laughs> in recent know. weeks, and we hadn't been able to establish we it. We got fact. beaten to the punch, didn't we? We did, and we were upset about it, Jared. We, were. we very much were. But the cafe sighting is the new real estate buy. Forget the <laughs> house market. Isaac Rankin has destroyed that. He bought on the Gold Coast. He was traded. I think the cafe sightings are where they're at. Just quickly, you notice the text uh, is Griffin Logue linked to Sydney. He is. So this is another one. Swans have been in the frame, but I think if Griffin Logue leaves Fremantle, which is looking likely, he wants to get to Victoria. All right. Shoot your emails through waitly at sen.com.au. Send your texts. We'll reconvene tomorrow. Liam Stocker after midday. Sam is wrangling midday madness. We'll talk to you just before then. Well Cheers, done. Jared. Effective freight solutions delivering simple freight solutions to help grow your business. Visit efs.net.au. 